So today I'm going to talk about another one of my core principles, playing expressively at the piano. This is a core principle in my teaching and playing because music is all about communication, right? It's about saying something in sound that affects or moves the person listening to it. Before we get started, I will tell you, at the end of the day, expression is not something that somebody else can truly teach you. I can point you in the right direction, but expression is something that has to come authentically from within yourself. So first off, there's one simple principle that if you follow it with intentionality will totally transform your playing and your approach to the instrument. And that is, play expressively every time you sit down at the piano. That means every time, whether it's scales or chords or just a single note, whether you're playing hands separately or slowly or sight reading or learning notes for a new piece, never let yourself play mechanically. This one simple decision will change your entire perspective on your playing. Okay, so as I said, expressive playing has to come from within you, but I do have four ideas that you can use to help in your own work on playing more expressively. My first suggestion for playing more expressively is to train yourself to always think deeply about the motivation of the composer. Music is first and foremost about communication, and at some point, a composer had an idea for something that they wanted to communicate through sound. This might have been an emotion or an image or something else, but it initially took the form of something in their imagination, and then they used the tools of notation to translate those ideas in their head into something that someone else, i.e. you, the interpreter, could read. Therefore, your job as the interpreter is to bring those black dots on the page to life and infuse those sounds with emotion. You, the performer, serve as a conduit between the composer and the audience. It's crucial that you constantly ask yourself what the composer is trying to communicate at any given moment. The composer gives you clues in the score through actual pitches, rhythms, and articulations they wrote, but often there are other printed directions too, such as dynamic markings or written instructions, whether it's in English or another language. Use those musical instructions that the composer gives in the score as a guide for emotional meaning. The dynamics, articulations, and other printed directions are there for a reason. They're there because the composer wants to say something. Get in the habit of interpreting these instructions as an emotional clue by default. For example, if you see a crescendo, this is an intensification of sound and therefore an intensification of an emotional state. Don't just take it as an instruction to play louder. Dig deeper to find the emotional reason the composer is asking you to play louder. Another word you'll often hear used to describe emotion is character. So you're going to want to go through your piece phrase by phrase and use the clues in the music to identify the emotion or character that you think the composer is trying to communicate. As you go through and figure this out, Write it in your music so it can be a cue for yourself every time you play that spot to practice feeling and expressing the emotion you're trying to communicate. By doing this, you're, you're going to start worrying less about just playing the notes and following the instructions, and you'll be connecting over and over, phrase by phrase, with the composer's intentions. This process takes some extra imagination on your part, but once you start thinking that way, it can be really fun to put yourself in the composer's shoes. My second suggestion for playing more expressively is to make up a story for your piece. You can take the music you're working on and write a whole story that takes place in your mind's eye while you're playing it. To come up with ideas for a story, imagine that the music is a soundtrack for a movie with a series of scenes that are happening to drive the story forward. What would be happening in this particular scene? What's the action? Is it day or is it night? Is it spring, summer, fall? What season is it? Are you in the city or are you in the country? What's the landscape around you look like? Are there other people in the scene or is the protagonist alone? What's the protagonist like? What mood is the protagonist in? What action is happening in the scene? Much like my first example, you go through the piece phrase by phrase 
and make up the plot as you go along and write it in. It doesn't matter that the plot's just in your own head. Imagining a plot for your piece of music will help you create a convincing through line that helps you focus on saying something rather than just playing the notes. My third tip to help you play more expressively at the piano doesn't even involve sitting at the piano and practicing. And that tip is engage fully in the creative and natural world around you. It's more about cultivating a rich and dynamic inner creative life that you can draw from. Even if you are a super serious pianist and you sit at the piano for hours and hours and hours every day and practice with great devotion, unless you get out in the world and have some experiences, you're going to run up against the limits of your imagination without consciously putting some valuable input in there. You can actually curate an inner life for yourself by choosing to consume and engage with experiences and things that are going to inspire you and give you more imagery and ideas that you can draw on in your own interpretive work at the instrument. It's easy to get stuck in the world of our phones and our to-do lists and other obligations, but it's amazing how nourishing it can be to consciously engage in other art forms just for art's own sake. So here are some examples of what I mean. You could read poetry, you could read literature, go to an art museum, you could attend the theater, a live theater, you could enroll in a pottery class or a painting class, you could attend a ballet or modern dance performance, or just dance. Savor the food you're cooking, find new recipes, grow something outside, spend time hiking, spend some time outdoors. The idea here is to do activities that engage your imagination and inspire you. You want to do activities that give you a reservoir of imagery that you can draw from. Engaging with art and engaging with thoughts by great artists and interpreters can inspire in you emotions that you didn't even know were possible. And creating art yourself can connect you with that innate feeling of play and creativity we all have. And then, when you're at the piano, you can use the images and emotions you store up in your inner world to inspire you to play with more expression. And my fourth and final suggestion for you today on playing more expressively at the piano is to practice feeling emotions. There's a big difference between somebody acting like they're sad and somebody actually experiencing sadness. If somebody just acts sad, it can come across as insincere and you can spot it a mile away. When you're playing at the instrument and you want the music to express a certain emotion, it's not enough to just imitate what you think that emotion might sound like. Just like a good actor, you need to actually draw on your inner life and practice feeling the emotion you want to communicate as you play that particular section. It takes practice to learn to cue yourself to feel an emotion as you think about or play a particular phrase. To do this, it can be helpful to remember a specific time when you felt a particular emotion and practice summoning it up while you're sitting at the piano. Think of yourself as an actor. If an actor is in a play on Broadway and has to play the same role for 10 shows a week, they need to be able to summon the needed emotion with sincerity, regardless of how they actually feel that day. Maybe they're in a terrible mood, but they have to play a character that's just overjoyed and they have to do it convincingly. And so the way to do that is to summon a feeling inside themselves that then allows them to deliver their lines with that conviction and that emotion. One of the things I love about playing the piano is it allows you to try on and express emotions that are different from what you ordinarily feel. So, those are some of my thoughts on expressive playing at the piano. This core principle is something I work on a lot with my students and it's something that I keep at the forefront of my own mind in my playing. Remember, expressive playing has to come from within you. Nobody can feel the music for you or give you step-by-step -step instructions to follow. Start by committing to playing expressively every time you sit down at the instrument and try some of these ideas I gave you today. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'd love to hear from you too. What strategies do you use to play expressively at the piano? Leave them in the comments below.